Well, hello there. Welcome to another tutorial by She's Eclectic UK. I'm Lynn, and this week I'm going to be doing more resin with acetate inserts. So my inspiration this week is Tim Burton, and I think if you've ever seen his films, it's fair to say he has a very easily recognisable visual style. He's not a stranger to a stripe or a spiral. So this week I'm going to be doing stripes and next week I'm going to be doing spirals. I was just showing you there that I've already started to glue in, I say glue, but I mean UV resin in the strips of acetate into the mould to make the stripes. The UV resin I use will be linked in the description if you want to check it out. If you want to check out the previous week's video I'll link it up in the corner it basically goes over the technique in more detail so I'm not going to go into it in as much detail this week so I'm just going to speed up the footage of me putting the acetate in in strips because if you've seen it once you've seen it a thousand times and it also lets me cover up the fact that I was incredibly ham-fisted whilst trying to do this and kept knocking things over with my big fat fingers. If I could offer any advice to you if you intend to do this is to use a pair of tweezers because it will aid you in placing the acetate within the mould without getting your fingers in the way. It would have saved me so much time and frustration but hey, what's craft without wanting to tear your hair out? So after many frustrating minutes I finally finished and then I moved on to deciding what colours I was going to use. I knew I wanted to use black because that's Tim Burton's thing but I wasn't sure whether the other stripe should be orange but in the end because I was thinking mainly of the image of Beetlejuice's suit I decided to go for white and black. Just as I thought I decided on just white and black I found some pretty glitters which I thought would go really well in it. So I got these from AliExpress and there's all sorts of different garish mixes of glitters. And I thought that was right up Tim Burton Street. So I then decided I was gonna do white and black mainly, but one of the white stripes, which wouldn't be as opaque as the others, would have some of the glitters in. Well, that's the plan anyway. So, on with the gloves. I swear I must have massive man hands because these are quite tight on me and they're large. And now we move on to mixing the resin. I got this resin from eBay. I'll put the link down in the description if anyone's interested. It's quite a good clear resin and it cures in about 12 to 24 hours. So, didn't know how much this mould was gonna take. I mixed up about 30 grams of resin which in hindsight was probably too much but I managed to pour a couple of earrings with it afterwards and me being me I poured too much of part B when I put it in so I had to put in more of part A it's like a vicious circle for those of you who are easily offended please look away now I am about to stir my resin with a wooden stick I've kept in a few seconds of me stirring the resin really slowly and gently and then I've sped it up when I got bored and I did it really fast. When I finished mixing I split the resin between the two pots, one for white and one for black. In hindsight I really should have done it in three, one for black, one for white and one for the slightly less opaque white with the glitter and I'll show you why later. After adding about five or six drops of the Decor Rom colorant, I also added some black glitter. This is like a glitter shaker pot selection from the range. It's really reasonably priced from there, much cheaper than Hobbycraft I find. Onto the white and I'm adding slightly less colorant because I wanted to pour the first line mixed in with the glitter so you'd still see the glitter through the white because it would have less pigment in it. This is why I said not to do what I do because I made such a mess of this. I tried to spoon it out on a lollipop stick 
and then proceeded to drop it in every section apart from the one that I wanted to get it into. After I did that the first time, you would have thought I'd learnt my lesson, but no, I actually did this twice and so had to clean up all the excess glitter twice and then mixed up the glitter I was actually going to use with a different colour glitter. Mm. And by the magic of television, it's like it never happened. Here I am pouring in the white resin, the slightly less opaque one, and then I get a pointy silicon stick and just agitate it a bit and make sure I'm pushing the glitter up to the corners so it's not all located in one spot. After I'd done that I could add the extra drops of white pigment to, I keep saying pigment, it's not pigment, it's colourant, to the resin and pour it in in the stripes. So it's every other one because I was counting the stripe with the glitter in it as a white stripe. Not the band. After that, I poured the black resin. It's at this point when you're actually filling it that you get to see whether you've managed to seal the gaps between the chambers effectively enough. Unfortunately, in a couple of places, there was a bit of bleed through from one side to the other, but most of it did stay in the section that it was supposed to. So I left it undisturbed for 24 hours and if you believe that you'll believe anything and the results the following day were this. This is where you can see the evidence of the colours bleeding into each other. It's worse with the black because obviously it shows quite a lot on the white and then I wrestle with it to try and get it out of the mould. Ta-da! What do we think? I really like the way that the glitter turned out in the white stripe. Not that it looks remotely white, but it does look purposeful. I'm a little annoyed that um, the glitter that's bled through seems to have sunk down to the bottom, so it's quite obvious on the front, but it's beautiful and shiny, and I really like the effect. It does remind me of Beetlejuice, but it also reminds me of an Everton mint or a humbug, which is probably more appropriate for Tim Burton. So all in all, I think it's pretty cool. I think if I did it again, I would be extra careful that I'd sealed the chambers properly and that I wasn't over pouring the resin so it flowed from one to the next. So that's it for week one of my Tim Burton acetate in resin video. I'll be doing another one next week, as I said, with spirals. If you're interested, I'm going to be using a really iconic Tim Burton image. I'm wondering if you can guess which image I'm going to choose. Again, I'm going to be using it in the same moulds. So I hope you tune in next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.